Welcome back to Film Music Media's annual Best Scores of the Year video series. We took 2020 off out of respect for the turmoil that all of us experienced during the pandemic. 2021 saw many projects come to light that were long delayed, as well as projects that were fully produced during some of the hardest times in all of our lives. It's time to list Film Music Media's Best Scores of 2021. As always, we break it down into the top five scores of each visual medium. Video games. Television. Film. Number five, It Takes Two. Composer Gustav Grefberg continues his collaboration with game director Joseph Fares after scoring Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, and A Way Out. He is joined by co-composer Christopher Eng for this extremely creative co-op experience. The story is about a couple on the verge of divorce who must now fix their relationship while being shrunken down objects in their own house. The score shines immensely as it takes you from one whimsical environment to another. While the emotional core is a minimal thematic throughline that carries you through the character's story, it's really the different styles of the music that bring the adventure and co-op gameplay to life. From traveling into space with their daughter's space toys to navigating the garden and dodging bugs, to finding their old musical instruments and vinyls to rediscover their passions. The score gets to shine in different ways while still being the backbone that moves things forward. Number four, Call of Duty Vanguard. Call of Duty's yearly formula is typically saved by the composer that each developer brings onto the project, and we've had an amazing roster of composers each bringing their own voice. For this return to WW2, Sledgehammer Games brought on Bear McCreary to flesh out a tight campaign story and bring some great flair to multiplayer. McCreary's strong thematic writing shines here as he blends some modern elements into a score that has a big orchestral identity. Vanguard's theme is reminiscent of his Battlestar Galactica Apocalypse theme in the best way possible, and he even adds a western Morricone flair to the score. Engaging rhythms and pulse-pounding melodies carry you through the WW2 landscape while bringing the heft and machismo you'd expect from Call of Duty at this point. The score has style to spare and is as beautiful as it is bombastic. The music makes plenty of missions stand out in the campaign, as well as makes multiplayer an engaging experience from match start to match end. Number 3. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart Insomniac Games tapped Mark Mothersbaugh and Wataru Hokoyama for the interdimensional adventure featuring everyone's favorite Lombax and robot. Ratchet & Clank's platform gameplay shines once again as you venture from planet to planet to tackle objectives and save the day. The games have always provided a fantastic backdrop for composers to be big and adventurous with the music. Mothersbaugh and Hokoyama add a great dose of narrative structure when needed, but the music stands out for its world-building elements. Each planet you visit has its own identity, but the score still feels thematically familiar no matter how far you travel through space and time. Electronic textures enhance the score and give it a tactile feel, but they never overshadow the orchestral heart of it. The music is bright, big, and colorful, just like the game is, and it makes for a thrilling adventure while making everything extremely engaging for the players. Number 2. Deathloop Video game veteran Tom Salta tackles Arkane's new time-looping retro-action thriller with a dose of fun 60s-inspired sounds and a modern aesthetic. The score could very much be described as psychedelic noir, and it's a total stylistic blast from start to finish. Salta has tons of fun with crafting pulsing rhythms and rock and roll builds as the player works their way through the first person shooter. Vocalist Ariel Brighton adds an otherworldly wail to some of the tracks with her vocals. The score complements the visual style of the game perfectly, and all of the wonderful art direction pops off the screen because of how well the music makes everything come alive. Plus it just makes everything a ton more fun. Number 1. Returnal Composer Bobby Krillick, also known as the Haxon Cloak, was brought on by developer Housemark to add his signature sound to this ambitious third-person roguelike shooter. If you're not a gamer, then you may know Krillick's atmospheric film and TV scores such as Midsummer, Snowpiercer the TV series, and the second season of The Alienist. Returnal is a dark science fiction mystery that slowly puts together pieces of the puzzle. The time loop narrative following Celine as she investigates a mysterious signal on an alien planet leads players down the rabbit hole of discovery. The score feels like fragments of memories and emotions all trying to scream their way out of the darkness. Electronic textures build and layer to immerse you in this mystery while also bringing a sense of dread and intensity to the gameplay. Returnal's score goes beyond just being a vehicle to push gameplay and instead brings the player into the mind of the protagonist and explore her journey. The score checks off every box in making the gameplay engaging while also fleshing out a wonderful character arc. Number 5. Ted Lasso, Season 2. Who knew that a character from NBC Sports promos would turn into Apple TV's first bona fide hit? 
Created and developed by the power team of Bill Lawrence, Brendan Hunt, Joe Kelly, and Jason Sudeikis, the underdog story of genuine optimism overcoming the hardships that life throws at you seems to be the beacon of light we all need in these times. The series is composed by Marcus Mumford of Mumford & Sons fame, along with composer Tom Howe, who had worked with Bill Lawrence previously on the short-lived Whiskey Cavalier. While Howe co-composed the series' main theme with Mumford, he provided additional music on Season 1. Season 2 saw Howe as co-composer with Mumford. Bill Lawrence essentially scored Scrubs with indie songs peppered with original score stings, and he takes that style to Ted Lasso, except now he has two amazing composers that can flesh things out in incredible ways. Delicate piano and simple guitar add the perfect amount of emotion to each scene, while Howe brings some of his more veteran scoring chops for the bigger moments. Season 2's score is definitely more structured and has a wonderful thematic arc. The two composers' styles blend seamlessly, making Ted Lasso simple in execution but big on impact. Ted Lasso may bring home awards in the comedy category, but it can no way be boxed in and defined as a comedy. The series showcases both highs and lows. The characters experience real emotional pain and grief that they need to overcome, and the score always finds that path out of the darkness, hitting those moments and shining a light on the good things in life. A score in a show like this is always overlooked, but Mumford and Howe are doing something you won't find anywhere else on television. Number 4. Squid Game The Korean drama that took the world by storm captivated audiences not only for its intense premise, but also because the balance of amazing characters, art direction, cinematography, and score working together. The music became one of the show's biggest characters. Composer Zhang Jae-il comes off the heels of working with director Bong Joon-ho on Aksha and Parasite. For Squid Game, he also brought on composers 23 and Park Min-ju to add a variety of styles to the score. Zhang Jae-il's haunting first piece played on children's instruments opens into a wonderfully crafted score that balances intensity as well as the emotional core of our hollow and broken characters that we get to know. The score hooks you in as much as the premise of the show does, and then takes its time to develop and shift to keep you on the edge. The imagery of the show pops a lot stronger due to how effective the music is, and it makes Squid Game linger in your mind long after you've finished it. Number 3. The Wheel of Time, Season 1 Lauren Balfe has already established himself as one of the most talented storytellers across every visual medium. His television work continues to showcase his talents as he brings his A-game to build worlds and bring characters to vivid life. His work on His Dark Materials showcases some exceptional scoring, and The Wheel of Time is on par with that excellence. The Wheel of Time already feels like a fully realized world from the start. It's as if Balfe has created a unique musical language for the series that doesn't need to find its identity and be developed or massaged out across the season. The storytelling is rich, the emotions flow, and the characters come to life through the music. The score feels like a natural extension of the show's beautiful production design and art direction and that's when the music can become truly immersive. The Wheel of Time is rich with melodies and themes and is one of Valve's most engaging scores from start to finish. Number 2. Succession, Season 3. Part divine comedy, part Shakespearean tragedy. Succession has captivated viewers from the start with powerful performances and a high-stakes storyline that makes the audiences feel that the world is to be gained or lost. Nicholas Bertel continues his masterful score into Season 3 and proves he was ready for the challenge of scoring his first television series. Bertel has structured the scores very much like a symphony, with Season 1 being Movement 1, Season 2 being Movement 2. Traditionally, the first movement is brisk and very much alive and upfront, while the second movement is much slower and allows everything to marinate. Now we're moving into the third movement. Season 3 does not slow things down, and Bertel continues to evolve this score in the most amazing ways. Bertel is one of the most talented composers working today, and he shows that through how this score has played out over the course of three seasons. Season 3 builds upon the foundations he has set previously, but it's also constantly changing. Themes you think are for one character shift and become for others. The score opens up a window into the minds of the characters as this bid for power plays out. The score plays up the absurdity, but also keeps things grounded, and when it needs to spear you in the heart, it doesn't hesitate. Number 1. Midnight Mass. The Newton Brothers, comprised of Andy Grush and Taylor Newton Stewart, continue their wonderful creative journey with writer producer director Mike Flanagan. Midnight Mass stays with you episode after episode, and it haunts you long after you finish it. This deep and dark exploration of existence, spirituality, and faith is a slow and meditative journey into the unknown. The score is a masterful blend of newly recorded versions of Christian hymns and intricate scoring that help tell the story as we watch it unfold. The hymns play during important moments while the score is meticulously crafted to build the narrative and help build the atmospheric tone. The pain and emotion felt by characters is echoed through the music during some of the best scenes in television in recent years. The subject matter and themes of the series are dark and dreary, but this is neither a pro-atheist or pro-religion show. It's merely taking some expertly written characters and exploring the human condition with the gothic fiction framework. The score is so masterful in its execution that it feels like it was born out of every frame shot, every edit, and every nuanced performance on screen. Number 5. Encanto 
Jermaine Franco brings a true, genuine energy to the score for Encanto. Disney's recent musical efforts usually result in fantastic songs that tend to overshadow the score, but Jermaine's score offers some incredibly memorable themes, instrumentation, and a narrative structure that works so seamlessly with the songs from Lin-Manuel Miranda. The score never feels overshadowed, and it has plenty of moments to shine. Franco also produced the film versions of the songs, which helped keep Encanto's musical identity stay away from feeling fragmented or fractured. Encanto becomes a wonderfully lush musical journey with rich orchestration and an emotional core that resonates. It's one of the best scores to grace the modern era of Disney animation. Number 4. The Power of the Dog Johnny Greenwood's somber psychological score perfectly matches the story unfolding on screen of Jane Campion's powerful character drama. The film deals with broken characters facing existential suffering in the Old West, and deals with themes of toxic masculinity, grief, and sexuality. The characters clash in ways that are expertly mirrored in the score. The music works wonders in its simple approach. It feels of the time period, but also feels like a crafted exercise in exposing the inner emotional wounds of the characters. In the film, the score is sparsely spotted, and that makes its impact hit harder. The simple approach of just strings, piano, and the occasional brass makes the score feel stripped bare and exposed, almost skeletal. The haunting and powerful ending to this film leaves a lasting impact with how the music resolves the story, making it one of Johnny Greenwood's most intricate efforts. Number 3. The Green Knight Composer Daniel Hart and director David Lowery have been crafting exceptional films all the way back to their debuts as young filmmakers, and The Green Knight sees their collaboration grow even more with a score that celebrates its unique identity to Lowery's wonderful vision on the old Arthurian tale. Hart truly creates a medieval sound with the score, utilizing instruments like a recorder, Yes, that instrument you played in elementary school, and having choral elements sung in Middle English. Strings and percussion all feel imperfect, but in the best way. You can feel the performance of certain instruments as the players speed up and slow down. The percussion doesn't always feel totally uniform. The chorus feels like it's in the room with the musicians. The score feels raw, but yet oddly calculated to take you on this supernatural journey. The score also matches the tone and atmosphere perfectly. Each note feels like it was born from the imagery on screen. It matches the color palette, the pacing, the performances. There are so many amazing textual elements to the score. It plunders the audience into the world and the journey, sending you through this weird and fantastical land. You truly feel like you've completed a journey when you come up on the other side and the film comes to a close. Number 2. The Last Duel Harry Grigson Williams is no stranger to medieval adventure and drama, and has scored his fair share of epics. However, The Last Duel is something much more unique, and not something on the scale of, say, Kingdom of Heaven. Ridley Scott's historical drama about two friends broken apart when one is accused of raping the other's wife takes viewers down different points of view. The film plays out in chapters, as you see the same events happen from all three different perspectives, similar to Kurosawa's Rashomon. This narrative structure allowed Gregson Williams to truly craft a score that became more than a period piece. Not only does the lyrical style of Harry's writing give the music a timeless feel, the music is one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle in helping the unique structure of the film work. Harry makes sure we are seeing things from the point of view of each character and it's not till the end when the score rises above the characters to add its final stamp as a bookend to the whole story. The Last Duel sees both Ridley Scott and Harry working in top form, showcasing what two veteran storytellers are able to accomplish. Unfortunately, the film was lost in the release shuffle of the pandemic, but it's one that begs to be sought out and experienced. Number 1. Dune Hans Zimmer and Denis Villeneuve are both incredibly passionate about Frank Herbert's original novel, and the final film shows that in every frame. Hans has crafted one of the best scores of his career with Dune. It is a monster of a score in terms of size, scope, and weight. This massive and intricate soundscape feels like a giant beast awakening from a deep slumber to bring Arrakis and all the characters of this epic story to life. The music feels as if it was stitched to the picture to help create the ebbs and flow of the narrative. The score sometimes feels like a giant wave rising and building, about to crash on the shore, but then can recede and pull back to echo the fragility of certain moments and characters. The score is successful in feeling otherworldly, while also feeling ancient with primal percussion and vocals. There's a primeval spirit to the music, feeling like it's about to give birth and shine a light on something we don't know existed, which is exactly where we leave off since this is only part one of Denis' vision for Dune. The score is an incredible accomplishment that showcases just how music must tell the story as much as the visuals do.